Good night. Welcome to Calvary Chapel. Let us pray. Ah, oh, Lord, it's just going to be good to worship you and forget about today and tomorrow and later tonight. Just you and us in this building tonight, Lord. We want to bless you. Lord, we want to exalt you. We want our praises. We want to lift you up. And we know, Lord, as that happens, that our hearts just get in line with you. And, Lord, you will minister to us tonight through your word. And you will touch us. You will conform us into your image. The Holy Spirit, you, Holy Spirit, will do that. So thank you so much that you care for us so much that you live inside us and you lead us and you guide us. Be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's almost wrapping there, man.
are holy. You are worthy to receive all glory. All honor, Lord, all power. Thou art Chapter 20. Because you might be king. I know. 
Exodus chapter 20. Amen. I really needed that tonight. I needed to worship the Lord tonight. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes, I mean, we need it all the time, but sometimes you just need it more than others. Well, I better read it out of of my Bible here because it's a long verse that we're going to look at today. I can't memorize it. It's verse 15. It says, you shall not steal. Oh, I guess I didn't, I guess I didn't have to read it, but. We've been looking at Exodus chapter 20. We looked at the whole chapter and now we've been going, this is our eighth week in uh, looking at the Ten Commandments. Just looking at one a week because, you know, we can read them. We can read them fast. We hear them all the time. We say them all the time. But sometimes it's good to look at each individual one just to let it sink in a little bit deeper. Or, I don't know, maybe just to remind us or something. But it's the Eighth Commandment. It's straightforward and it's simple. In the Hebrew, it says, steal not. You know, most of us think it's a good idea to not steal in our cultures. You know, it's just, for society, it's just a, it's a good thing not to steal. If a culture is a healthy culture, they will deal with thieves. If it's not a healthy culture... They don't deal with thieves very well. There's not too many healthy cultures around the world today, is there? <laughs> you know, we all know what it's, what it's like to have... I'm pretty sure everybody here knows what it's like for, to have somebody steal something from you. It's not fun. It's not nice. You feel violated. Especially if they come into your home and steal from you. It's just, just not good. You know, I heard this story one time. I can't remember from what pastor I heard it from, but... It's about a, a man who dealt with some thieves. He took advantage of thieves. Now, I like this. I shared it with Kristen before the service here today. He found an ingenious way to get rid of his garbage. He wrapped it up nicely, like he went shopping, and put it in the front seat of his car, and left the door unlocked, and the thieves would come and steal his garbage. <laughs> That's a great idea, isn't it? Can you imagine when they get home? Or can you imagine if you put dog poop in it or something? <laughs> ah! That's something, you know, I would never do that. We understand that taking something from somebody is, from, it doesn't belong to us, is wrong. And we teach our children at a young age not to steal. Romans 2.21 says, You therefore who teach one another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? Hmm. Do we steal? Well, those of you who are from the United States, I don't know how it is here in Belize, but there's this organization in the United States called the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. It's the tax man. You get the tax man here, right? They take your money. So what would the government say about taxes? I mean, it's the law. The government wastes all our money. I mean, they, they, you know, they waste all our money. Why should we have to pay our taxes? Well, that's, you know, it's a law. And the Bible says we would obey the laws of the land unless it goes against God. And that we're supposed to pay our taxes. What did Jesus say? What, you, you know, you don't, have to turn, you don't have to hold your place in Exodus 20, verse 15, because you can probably remember, thou shalt not steal. So go to Matthew chapter 22. Here's what Jesus says. Starting in verse 15. Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. It says, Then the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. You know, they were trying to get Jesus. They want to get rid of him, man. They want to kill him. So they sent to him their disciples from Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God in truth. Nor do you care about anyone for you do not regard the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? 
Is it lawful to, lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? See, they were trying to get him to say, Don't pay taxes. You know, and then you can... Hey, this man says, Don't pay your taxes. He's against the law. Then he goes and he t- tells you to pay taxes and stuff, and then you know, people don't like him for that. You know, they're just trying to get him in, in his words. So Jesus said, show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius, and he said to them, whose image and inscription is on this? They said to him, Caesar's. He said to them, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Who is on your money? The queen. So we pay, you, pay our, you pay your taxes. If we don't pay our taxes, we are thieves and we're stealing. Ouch. A lot of Christians are thieves. A lot of people in the world are thieves. Matter of fact, everybody is a thief, some one time or another in their life. Do we steal? You know, I, well, take a step backwards. This, this is a figure from about 20 years ago. If we didn't steal what was due the government, the national debt would be paid in a year. That's how much money is not paid to the IRS. I heard a statistic one time, if every Christian tied 10%, there wouldn't be no hunger in the world. So ask yourself again, do we steal? How about this? You, you are at work, and you know what your boss expects of you. And the other guys, you know, they're taking extra time at their breaks. They run down to the store while they're working. They sit around when the boss is not watching. They do as little as possible to earn their money. That is stealing. It's stealing time, which is money. It's being a thief. It's robbery. When you, when you know you get a job and you know what you're supposed to do for that job and you don't do it and you try to cheat and steal and, and not work, you're stealing I've done that before, okay? You know, I'm not pointing fingers. You know, I point one. I got eight coming. Two. I brought eight coming. Got six coming back. Two are going up. You get six days off a year, sick pay or something. You get six days off, and you, you're only sick four days. So you call in the other ones and lie. Well, I'm sick today. I'm not coming in because you want your sick days pay. Hmm. I don't know if that's stealing or not. That's between you and the Lord. Have you ever went in the store and they gave you too much change? Praise God, hallelujah. Look at that, man. I got 20 cents extra. And you don't give it back? That's stealing. That's not your money. You know, let me give you a little testimony. You know, I I was always in business for myself. And uh, I had seasonal kind of business. But, you know, I wanted to do something to get out in the community one time. And there was this job opening at at a... uh, a spa up, up in Lake Tahoe in this casino and there was a spa where they had a pool and people worked out you know and sat in the jacuzzis and stuff like that and I thought you know what? I didn't need the money I just I wanted to get out and share Jesus with people and I knew working in the spa I would just check people check people in and out and I could just sit there and read the Bible and study the Bible I did that and if somebody came along I could share Jesus with them and it was such a blessing because one of my best friends in the whole world he was in that spa and he wasn't saved I didn't know him before that. And, he, and I shared Jesus with him. The guy came to the Lord and we played music together for years and you're still, he's a great friend of mine. So it was a very fruitful little job I only had for maybe two months is all I did it. But my first paycheck, you know, I got a, I, I was, you know, I was getting like a, that week or something, five, four days pay or something I had coming. And so I got my paycheck there was five days pay on it. And I grabbed it and I, 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 I got inside my car, I opened it up, you know, I looked at it. Wow. Hallelujah. I got an extra day's pay, man. I was like so excited. I had an extra day's pay. And I started to drive off, you know, and this little still voice says to me, that's not your money. <laughs> okay, God, I'll go back. <laughs> I couldn't take it because I, I felt like I was stealing because, you know, I didn't work for that money. 
So I went back to you know the cashier at the at there at the club that passed out the checks and stuff. I go, you guys paid me one day extra, and she goes, what are you doing back here? What's the matter with you? And I said, well, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus, and I believe I'm stealing that money, so I I don't want to take it because it's stealing. She's just like looking at me like, whoa, dude. So she takes a check and she goes back and she goes back. She says, it was you got a day's vacation pay or a holiday pay for one of the days. It's yours. Oh, okay, I left. I got it anyhow. But you, can you imagine if I would have taken it and I didn't deal with it? It would be on my mind and my heart today, my conscience. You know, I, I've tried to go back and all, I've tried to go back and as much as I could in all my areas of my life and take care of things that I dealt with. I, I'll give you another one, uh, example in just a little bit. Well, then what do you do, man? I mean, how do you not steal? I mean, well, how do you stop this, you know, besides being aware of it? And, well, Ephesians 4.28 says this. It says, Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. That's the way out of it. If you steal, steal no more. You know, the problem with some thieves is, it's easy money. It's addicting. If you go into somebody's house and, and you steal a bunch of stuff and you get, and, and you get $500 or maybe $1,000 worth of stuff and, you, and you're only there for you know, 15 minutes and you just made $500 because you stole the stuff and you sell it and then you have to go to work the next day for $60 or $70 for the day, hmm, it's much easier to go into somebody's house and take some stuff, right? So it's addicting. Addicting. So he says here in Ephesians 4.28, number one, he says, number one way to not steal, work with your hands. If you have a tendency to steal, work hard. You know, God didn't give the curse to man to, to work hard, you know, to help us. He, he gave it to us. It keeps us from being a thief. It keeps us out of trouble. Work keeps us out of trouble. You know, when you have idle time, man, trouble problems work if you don't work hard you get you get self-worth you know you're, you're you kind of get low self-esteem although you know we I don't really believe in low self-esteem I don't I believe in his esteem I don't believe in self-esteem I believe in his esteem because some people will tell you you need a better version of yourself no I don't I need a better version of Jesus in me not of myself because myself stinks. The flesh is wicked. And that's going around in the world today. People are, that's passing on now. People are, the secular world is, you need a better version of yourself. No. If you're a Christian, if you get a better version of yourself, you have a lesser version of Jesus. You need a better version of Jesus in your life. And you don't need self-esteem. You need His esteem. You need Him in your life. And you and your esteem will be good. <coughs> You know, Jesus even says, do the extra. Because, you know, when, when, you, when, you, when you feel you, you can't work and stuff like that, you get depressed, you know, and, and no sense of accomplishment and things like that. So Jesus tells you, you know, work hard. And not only that, he says, in Matthew 5, 41, he says, and whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Your boss tells you to do something? Well, do it twice. Do it for Jesus, not for him. Because when you go to work, you're working for Jesus. Just ha you just happen to have a worldly boss. And you work for Jesus, you work harder. Work twice as hard as your boss wants. The only problem is the other employees don't hate that. Slow down, slow down, slow down. You know, I got taken to the cleaners when I first moved here. I didn't know. I need to get my yard hoed. You know, get, get it cleaned out, get all the weeds out and stuff like that. And there was nothing in my yard that time, but just some weeds and stuff like that in our little house sitting there. And I paid these two guys uh, that weren't from this village, but they were from a village out in Santa Cruz or something, not Santa Cruz, but one of the mine villages. I paid them to hoe my yard, and they charged me $400 and took four days <laughs> to hoe my yard. Four days. $400. This was 17, 18 years ago. And then the next guy I hired... He wanted $40, and he did it in a half a day. He did it in four hours. I thought, something's wrong here. 
That's not right. If somebody underpays you, you know, you go to work for somebody and they're not paying you as much as you think you should get or what the job is worth, and maybe they aren't. Maybe you feel it's a $50 job or a $60 job and they give you 30 or 40 Well, don't take the job or work. Don't steal the money by being lazy. Well, I'm... Because I've heard, I've, I'm, tell, I'm told by people, well, it takes us longer to do it because it's only a $50 job. We're getting paid for $50, so that's how we're going to work. That's how people work here. That's not right. That's thieving. That is stealing. Sorry. Not just here in Belize, but you in the United States, online, watching. You. Oh, man. I felt like Jimmy Swaggart there. You sinner. No. no. Erase, erase. You klutz. Oops. I got carried away, I'm sorry. Number two, he says, there in Ephesians 4, 28, he says, you know, <clears throat> work, he said, but reach out with your hands, help others, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, reaching out to others, help others. Bless other people. You know, you don't work hard to bless yourself. We should work hard to bless other people. It keeps us out of trouble. It keeps your focus on the things of God and not on yourself and the things of the world. It'll change your attitude. And it will bless you when you help other people. There, there's, it's a blessing. And you won't be a robber. You'll be a giver. And then when you stand before Jesus one day, You'll be blessed. I guarantee you, it'll be a blessing. I, I would, you know, I would, I want to. I like to stand before Jesus and him, him say to me, "Oh, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in to my rest." Then, uh, then to hear, "Come on in." Didn't do nothing. Look at Zacchaeus and turn to Luke nineteen. Zacchaeus, he was a rip-off tax collector. Talk about. Oops, I'm online. Better be careful. Talk about the organization I talked about earlier. He was a tax collector. Luke chapter 19, verse 1, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. How do you think he got rich? Collecting extra taxes. And he sought to see who Jesus was but could not because of the crowd for he was a short guy. <laughs> he was a little guy. Sorry. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your home. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being Zacchaeus? Can you imagine? There you are, and there's Jesus coming, and you just want to see who he is. And there you are, so you climb up in this tree so you can see him, and Jesus says, Jim, come on down. I'm going to eat at your house. Wow. You know, Kerwin and I were talking today, you know, about... about uh, idols, you know, and, and basketball stars, and you know, people, you know, f of fame that sometimes we give give uh, uh, worth to that we shouldn't give worth to. That's it. You know, and then you read in Psalm 15, it says, "Don't give the vile person, you know, don't give them no worth. Don't do that." So we're talking about that today. But Jesus. We can give him all the worth there is. We, we need to put Jesus on our pedestal. We need to put Jesus on the throne and give him that worth. Not somebody else, not some idol, but Jesus. And this one, here is the key, man. Wow, me, man, he's going to be honored. Jesus wants to eat it. Did you know you can have Jesus eat at your house too? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, when you sit down to eat and you pray, if you pray, when you eat, I, I like to pray before I eat every meal. I like to pray during my meal. I like to pray when I eat candy and cookies and ice cream. You know, I always pray that, you know, Lord takes, makes good things for it in my body. You know, I don't know if he does and he honors that, but I ask him anyhow. But when I, when I eat, I just like to talk to Jesus. Because he's there. He's there. I, I've known some people that have a chair at their table for Jesus. Because he's there. He's there. This guy... He's going to receive him into his house. But you can receive him into your house every, all the time, everywhere you are. He's there. 
So in verse 6 there, it says, So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, that's the people, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner because he was a tax collector. See, Jesus went to the sinners. He didn't go hang out in the churches, man. He went, he went, to, the, went to the churches, but he didn't hang out there. He went to the prostitutes. He went to people like me and reached out. And the people complained. You know, if those of you who saw Jesus' Revolution, didn't you, you saw it in the movie, didn't you? In the movie Jesus' Revolution. There were the hippies, and there was the people that you know wore their suits and ties in their church, and they were very proper. And the hippies were barefooted. <laughs> like this. And then people didn't want him to come in. And Chuck Smith said they could come in. Because what? Jesus said, come on in. Guess what happened to him? They got saved and put some shoes on. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I have half of my good I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. If he he is going to go back for everything he stole and pay four times back. When I was in my twenties, early twenties, and I was making jewelry. And so I had, to, I had to cut my own stones and I made my jewelry. And so I had to buy the rocks to cut the stones out of, you know, to make nice jewelry. And, and I had the most beautiful rocks you've ever seen. I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful stones. And there's certain stones I really, really liked. And, and, I, and I went into this rock shop one time, you know, and, and uh, I stole one of the rocks. But, you know, I'm not talking about just a rock you find on the ground. I'm talking about a, a prize. Make a lot of money, you, you know rock and I stole it but you know it was on my conscience I, and I wasn't walking with the Lord then, but I knew the Lord but I wasn't walking with him and I stole this thing and then years later I, I, I gave my life to the Lord and about seven years later or six years later quite a while later I was back in that area in the Bay Area and I was going down the road and, and, and Miss Ann and I were going down the road and I said you know what I'm going to stop and I'm going to pay that guy seven times what that rock cost. And so I stopped by there and he was still alive, this older gentleman. I said, you know, I'm really sorry I, I asked your forgiveness, but you know, years ago I stole the rock from you here and, and I feel terrible about it. And I give my life to Jesus and I want to make up for that now. I want to pay you seven times the value of that rock right now. He goes, oh, he's, he says, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I mean, he was amazed that I even came in to do that, you know, like six years later. And I paid him seven times. <clears throat> what it was worth. And I took care of it because I stole it. I've, you know, I've done some bad things in my life, you guys. I mean, those of you who come to this church and look up at me and think, you know, I'm Mr. You know, Mr. Clean, perfect guy, Pastor Jim never did anything. I'm telling you. i let you know I didn't. Bless other people. You know, and that was a blessing to that guy. No, they heard about Jesus. I don't know, maybe, maybe he ended up coming to the Lord because of that. I don't know. But it's a testimony of who Jesus was when a life has changed, taking care of business. Then, then thirdly, there in that scripture, you know, open up your hands and let God have you and have His. Open up your hands and bless the Lord. Listen, Malachi 3. Turn to Malachi 3. Malachi 3, just, just before uh, Matthew. Now let me read Ephesians 4.28 again so you see where we're at. I'll, I'll read that while you're turning there. It says, Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good. That's blessing other people and blessing God. That he may have something to give him who has need. Reach out to others, help others, and bless God. So Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. God wrote... The, speaks to his people. He speaks to his people and he says this, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And God says, in tithes and offerings. 
He says, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Now listen. God wrote this in the Old Testament, under the law, to the people. It was a law to tithe 10%. We are not under that law any longer, right? But I believe we should still be tithing, and we should start at 10%, and offerings above it. I and mean, that's just what I, I'm not telling you. You have to. It's between you and the Lord. You don't have to give anything ever. But then when you think about it, do we rob God of what He is due? Isn't everything we have His anyhow? Doesn't it belong to Him? In my life, the years that I was tight were the years that I made more money. And I would try to hold on to more and I wouldn't tithe my normal amount. But it seems like when I had less money and I would give to the Lord, I listen... I didn't have a need. When I had less money, and I, I should have had needs, I didn't when I was tithing. But when I had more money, I always needed more. And I wasn't giving what I should have to the Lord. I just share that with you as a testimony. Because God says this in the next verse there in Malachi. He says, watch, watch this. If you would bring into my storehouses, if you would tithe, if you would be giving. He says, watch if I, watch if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be enough be room enough to receive it. You know what God's saying? If you give to me, you can't outgive me, man. I'm going to bless you to death. You watch me. I'll pour it upon you. Now, I'm not a TV guy that says you give a dollar, you get a hundred back. Because if you did, I'd be really rich. So a lot of Christians. We'd be all giving our money. And those guys on TV that tell you, you give the money and God will give it back to you this, you know, if they gave their money... It, then they wouldn't have it. They always seem to need money, those guys on TV. Don't they always need money? Well, why do they need money if they're telling you if you give it, you won't have, you, you'll be blessed? Aren't they blessed when they give theirs? They must not give it. They just keep getting it from us, from the people that give it to them. You know, when you watch those television shows, oh yeah, I've never heard about me give something, send them some money. Now you do it from your heart, God blesses you, but boy, they answer to the Lord. He's saying man robs God. He says the first tenth is his. Ten percent. If you make a dollar, ten cents is the Lord. Ten dollars, one dollar. You know, I'm, I'm going to share this with you because I don't talk about this very often in our church. Only when it comes up. You cannot afford to not give to the Lord. He wants to bless you. And the only way He's going to do that is if you're a giver. Psalm 24, 1 says, the earth is the Lord's and it's all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. It's all His. You can't out bless Him. One time I gave this message years ago. There was a lady who came to the church here. Uh, you guys all know her, but I'm not going to say her name. And she only had $5 to, left in her name. And she, and she heard this message. And, she, and that, that's what she was going to eat with that week. And when she walked out, she put that $5 in that box. She said, you know what, Lord? I'm just going to give it to you. She put it in that box. The Lord gave her that week a business, a stove, uh, uh, a, thing to, a thing to cook the stove with, the gas thing, and another job. He totally blessed her. She came that Wednesday night and <clears throat> says, you wouldn't believe what God did. And she told me the story. And I go, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> and she became a faithful tither in this church. And you know what? God took care of her. And she, had, and she, didn't, she no longer had needs she was taken care of I would tell her your name but I don't think that's right but you all know her so if we do not give God one tenth are we robbing him I don't know that's what he says in the Old Testament we're in the New Testament we're not under the law so I leave it at that but it's one crime that I don't want to commit <laughs> I don't want to rob God because he wants to bless me try it just try it sometime. Because the person who robs God will probably rob other people too. The government, family, friends. And there'll be repercussions. You know, Jericho 6 and 7, there was a man named Achan. And uh, they went into Jericho. I think it was Jericho. They went in and, and Achan, when they went in to take the, take the land, God said, that city is mine and take nothing from it. He said, that's mine. It's my tithe. You take the city, but don't take any of the goods. Don't take anything from it. Not the animals, 
the gold, silver, nothing. Achan took a garment and some silver and gold, but he couldn't wear it. Because, you know, he's Jewish and they had their own clothes to wear. If he puts on the thing from Jericho, but no, where'd you get that, man? Down the local store in Jericho, you know, I mean, you know. He couldn't wear it, so he stole it and he buried it under his tent. She. And then, and they wiped out Jericho. You know, they, were, they would come in and they would wipe out. They'd win the battle with way less people. You know how they won the battle with Jericho? They just ran around it, right? And it fell apart. Because God told them, run around it. Go around it seven days. You know, blow horns and this. Boom, fell down. So they went to this small village. I think it was Ai. They went to the small village, Ai. Didn't have any, hardly any people in it. So they sent, you know, a few thousand. And guess what? They got whipped. They got whipped. They got beat. They, they all went back with their tails between their legs. Of course, they didn't have them, but you know what I mean? And God said to them, because they're wondering, what happened, what happened? And God said, there's sin in the camp. That guy stealing that money cost us thousands of lives. His people died because of his sin. Wow. And then Achan, he had to confess. He confessed, and guess what they did? They stoned him to death, and his family was stoned also. They killed them all. That's a lesson, Mom, Dad. That's a lesson. It affects your family too. It will affect your whole family. Work. Help others. Tie to God. And then number four, you know what? Look at His hands. The hands of Jesus. Where He was pinned to the cross. Where He died for you. Sit at the foot of the cross. Ask Him to help you. Lord, I, I don't want to. I don't want to do that anymore. I, I don't want to. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to. I don't want thief anymore. And He'll help you. He died for you there. He cares for you. He loves you, and He wants what's best for you. You know, Romans eight thirty two says He did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. How shall He not with Him also also freely give us all things? All things. He cares so much for you. He's going to give you everything. Everything you need here in this life. He says in the Word, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. He will add all those things to you that you need. Clothing, food, and a place to live, man. Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from those who walk uprightly. Do you hear that? He's not going to keep anything from you for those who walk uprightly. Those who walk with Him. Who, those of us who turn from our sin and turn to Him. He gives us everything. He promises to take care of us. You know, robbery is telling God you do not like the way He provides for you. Well, I don't like the way He provides for me. Look at them people up there in the plantation. Look what they got. Look what I got. I mean, everybody can say that about somebody somewhere along the line. It's saying, God, you don't take care of me. Be content where you are and where God has you. Because when you get to heaven, your riches are... You won't even think about it, what's happened here. You're, you're going to be so blessed. I know this, oh, there's this O. Henry short story. O. Henry had wrote a lot of short stories. And it was one called The Monkey Paw. A magical monkey paw where you got three, wi three wishes when you held it in your left hand. And this man, he got the monkey paw and he wished for a million dollars. Next day a telegram came. He had a million dollars because his son died and it was insurance. His heart was broken. So a second wish that his son would come back to life. And a strange thing occurred. His son had come back to life but was in a mangled condition with his body messed up. Guts hanging out from the train that ran over him. Third wish. Let my son die. Not to live that way and his son died. Sometimes, you know, we get greedy. We want more. And it doesn't pay off. It's, it, this, the story is showing us we don't always know what we need. 
I got to be. I prayed for a million dollars one time. I, after I was thinking about that story, you know, I probably should have never done that. God didn't give it to me. I knew He wasn't gonna, but I did. You know, we don't know what we need. God knows what we need, and He probably promises to take care of it. The problem is we take things into our own hands. Turn to 1 Corinthians 5. I'm going to end with this. This scripture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 5. I think it's 1 Corinthians 5. Oh my goodness. Well, it's verse 5. Of one, it's one of the chapters in Corinthians and it starts in verse 5. How's that? Now, I say this to your shame. I didn't put... Is it chapter 1, verse 5? I say this to your shame. I, I think it's early on. You know what? Just turn your Bibles off and I'll read it to you. I say this to your shame. It is so that there... It is so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one who will be able to judge between his brethren... But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Now therefore it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? Know you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> and such were some of you. But you were washed. You were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So you don't do those things anymore. You don't practice those things. You don't figure out how to rip off people anymore. You know who God is. Hey, so we're, maybe you're poor or we're poor. God knows that. Maybe it's the place that you are that you need to be so He can reveal Himself to you. If we believe God is in control, He is in control of where we are at. And if, the sooner we realize that and become content in those circumstances, He can bless us. You know the holes in His hands? They say that He knows best for us. And He wants best for us. He will take care of us. He will give to us what is right for us. So we don't have to steal. We don't have to covet. We don't have to... We don't have to do those things anymore. So he says, stop it. If you're doing it, stop it. If you're thinking about doing it, stop it. For those in the United States, tax time's coming up. Be careful. You heard, Lord, the flesh is so wicked. And it's so easy for our hearts to deceive ourselves to thinking even we're doing, well, Lord, but Lord, you know, I mean, look what they do with the money. I mean, I'm not giving my money to them because look what they're using it for. But you say, obey the law of the land. And that's the law. So help us in that area, Lord. Maybe we just have it in us in our flesh that we just like to borrow things and not give them back. Lord, well, not anymore, Lord. Convict us. Give us the strength and the power to overcome that sin in our lives. Let us steal no more. That our lives would glorify You. That, Lord, that would not be a, a wall between You and us. And our conscience would be clear. And for those of us, Lord, who have blown it, Lord, we know You went to the cross and shed Your blood that we can be forgiven. So, Lord, forgive us. We stole things, Lord. Forgive us. If there's something You want us to do about it, Lord, just show us that we can take care of it. But we receive that forgiveness right now, Lord, by Your blood. And we're going to walk out these doors and maybe online and turn off that online the computer tonight. 
knowing that we are a new creation in Christ and we are cleansed by your blood right now. That's why you came, Lord. And I thank you for that. And I thank you you came out of that grave and you're alive and you live in us by the Holy Spirit. So have your way in our hearts. Go before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you guys. Well, God bless you. We need to put the chairs up. Was there any announcements, Anna? Friday night, youth. Okay. Hey, you guys, it, these guys have been blessing us. You know, notice when you go by, we can't see at night. But take a look at the stage out there, man. They redid the stage. They stained, stained the Sunday school room. Looks good. They're working on fixing the windowsills downstairs. So pray for them. They can do that. Yes, appreciate it.